Hello, and thank you for joining me for another Tackling Technology Online session. Today's topic, leveraging the power of Google Sites. In the lower left-hand corner, you can find this presentation URL. In this presentation are a couple helpful links. Uh, in this particular session, links to examples of Google Sites that I'll show you briefly, as well as some additional support, uh, help topics, and guides uh, to help you later on um, to learn more about Google Sites on your own time. So let's jump into it. Uh, my name is Joe Valver. I'm one of the technology facilitators for Hamilton. And when I'm asked to talk about Google Sites or share some information about how to use Google Sites, one of the first things I like to go over is what actually is a Google Site. Uh, Google Site is no different than any other website that everyone in our district through Google Apps has the capability to create. Uh, the next question after I tell someone that is, well, what am I going to create a site for? What, do, what, do, what would I do that for? Uh, many times, individuals get caught up in the sites that they might typically use. Um, news sites, uh, shopping sites, social media sites. And it's hard to kind of grasp how that can be applied in a classroom. And the, the next thing I kind of tell everyone and share them is, what do all those sites have in common? And the main thing they all have in common is information. Uh, a site is nothing more uh, than a location to house information that you want to make public. Okay? So um, that's one of the kind of things I try and get everybody to put out of their mind of any conceptions of what they think a site technically is. Because realistically, a site is nothing more than a, a place that information is housed. And that information could be about a company uh, and things to purchase from that company. It could be a Facebook page with information about a person. It could be a school site about information for that school and the teachers. Okay, so in a classroom, all we want to do is display information. Well, what kind of information might that be? It could be information about projects. It could be information that maybe once was contained in a book report, but now is contained in a Google site. Um, it could be a portfolio for an art student. It could be any number of things. All Google Sites is, is a place to house all that information. And all of that can be done through Google Sites, okay? So um, briefly, now that we know kind of a little bit about what Sites is, here's some examples of Google Sites that have been used and created um, and are in practice today. Um, we have some on here for, um, such as I mentioned earlier, businesses, a physician's office. Click on that real quick. And the thing to keep in mind here is every single one of these sites was created using Google Sites and all the tools and features of Google Sites that you and your students have access to. Okay? So here you can see they have a home page, they have a page for appointments. You can create these drop down pages. Okay? Here's an example of a research group, okay? Researching energy, environment, and sustainable energy, okay? And all of these are different pages on their website that house information pertaining to their research, okay? And some of these are links, some of them are just information, okay? And this is nothing more than text boxes, okay? Here's some examples of some student portfolios. Here's one for a physics student. And you can see here they embedded some videos from YouTube. They write about their project um, and the progress they were making. They have a page set up for their research. and even a page with some presentation information, such as their poster, journals, uh, and Google Slides um, presentation. So without really getting too much into these different pages, again, these are something, if you go to the um, URL for this presentation, you can click on any one of these links and check these 
websites out and see what other people, and some of them are students, some of them are professors, some of them are businesses, see what people are using Google Sites to do. Um, this past fall, we used uh, Google Sites to, let me see if I can get to it once this is appears. There we go. To create an event page for uh, our first tech night. Okay. And now on it, you can see there's an option for event registration. We had information about the guest speakers. Okay. So you can drop images in. We had a map. Okay. Again, all done with Google Sites. So really all these pages and all these sites are doing nothing more than housing information that individuals want to make available to the public. Okay. So now that I kind of go, went over a few of these examples, let's go ahead and jump into Google Sites. So I'm going to click on my drive icon and I can get to it by either coming up here to the new button more and you can see Google Sites is right there or you might be able to find Google Sites under your waffle icon. Either option works just fine. Okay. <clears throat> now depending on which way you get to Google Sites um, you might be taken like I was straight to a blank page for you to start creating a new site if you use the waffle icon, you might be taken to the new Google Sites page in which you would see a number of different sites. Okay, Those can be sorted by um, any sites that you might be collaborating on or ones that are specifically owned or created by you. Okay, There is a, um, something to note here. There is still a classic version of Google Sites that is available for those that have created sites in the past using the old system. Okay, in the bottom left corner here, you can see this little classic site option. If you see something like this screen, down here in the bottom, well, I'd say on the left side here, there's an option that says New Google Sites. Just make sure you click on that so that you're in the newer version of Google Sites, which is a little easier to use and a little more user-friendly. And then you should see these tiles with all the sites you have access to. And again, if you just hit Own by Me, You'll see the ones that you have created. Here's the untitled one that I started. Or down here in the bottom right-hand corner, you can create a new one as well from there. So I'm going to go back into that site now. Okay. So up in the top light, uh, left corner, just like any other Google file that you're creating or working with, you have a name. I'm going to call this test site. Okay. That site can be, uh, again, whatever it is that you want to do. Tech night. It could be um, Johnny's chemistry project, Group B's research on the Civil War, whatever the site is going to be called. Okay, That is the name of that site. And you'll see it appears here in the top left corner of the navigation um, bar along the top here. Okay, Beneath that, is your banner or your welcome page. Here you can display a message and that can say welcome. You could have it just um, display your website name. Okay. It can be changed by size. Okay. Typically we want to keep these as titles. You can adjust alignments and you can even attach a link to that if you wanted to. You can also change the header type here. There's an option for cover, which makes it a little larger, large banner, banner, or title only. Okay. When you choose one of these other options, such as banner or large banner, if I hit the little back arrow here, you can choose an image. Okay. <clears throat> you could select from the ones they already have available or choose something that you have saved um, in your Google Drive. as well as you can search Google for an image that is appropriate for your website, okay? Just as we upload images into Google Slides, presentations, to Google Docs, you can get images into your site 
the exact same way. That's one of the nice things about Google Sites and that makes it so easy and user-friendly is that a lot of the processes for creating a site are very similar to the processes and features in the other Google applications. Okay. So right now we're looking at our main page or our home page. Okay. We have nothing on the body of our page. We have a header. Okay. And we also have a navigation bar. And what you'll notice is as I'm moving over these different parts of my website, I have little drop down or little um, dialog boxes that open up every once in a while or appear that allow me to do certain things, add logos, customize my image or header, okay? So keep an eye out for that as you are hovering around things with your cursor, okay? Now, to the right-hand side is our toolbar, okay? We have three main features of Google Sites. The insert feature, which is how we're going to plug that information and content onto our website and onto our different pages. We have our pages option, which is how we're going to add more pages, how we'll add sub pages, and how we can later on rearrange or organize these pages. Okay, And then we have some themes to choose from. One of the things about Google Sites that makes it a little easier and more user friendly is it takes a lot of that design element that a lot of us aren't comfortable with or have a hard time deciding what is aesthetically pleasing, picking fonts and colors and design aspects. And it takes all that out of the picture for us and allows us to focus more on the information we're putting on our site. So with themes, you can pick from a number of different themes, okay? Each theme has its own options of color palettes to choose from, as well as a couple different fonts to choose from as well. Okay? And when you pick these different themes and you choose these adjustments, it makes these adjustments to your entire site. Okay? So we'll go with this one for now. I'm going to leave it as red. The font style, capital, that's fine. Okay? So those are the three features. The next thing I'm going to jump back to is pages. And we're going to add another page. Well, just like we add anything else or create anything else new, we look for a plus icon. And here it is. Okay. So we're going to create a new page. First thing we have to do is name our page. So I'm going to stick with the idea of a research page or a research website. I type in my name. I can click on advanced custom path. It's a little more further down the line. We're not going to mess with that. Okay. Feel free to poke around and check things out. If you have an issue, you don't know what it is or what it does, you can always email us or even Google it. So we're going to hit done. I have my name in there. And now I have another page available. And my, uh, my navigation bar at the top now shows me my two pages, my home page and my research page. And this is exactly what my viewers are going to see and be able to interact with to get from one page to the next. And now that I've added another page, I also have this little gear up here along the left when I hover over top of there that I can click on. And that gives me two options for top navigation or side navigation. And you might have seen these side navigation bars especially on mobile devices, you click on it, out slides your pages from here, and you can jump from page to page that way. Okay, I'm gonna leave it with the top navigation for now. Now, for this research page, I'm gonna go ahead and actually go back to my presentation, and I'm gonna pull up that one student's physics portfolio. And we're going to kind of use that as our model for the time being. And there's no reason why your students couldn't use examples like this for their model. So it looks like under research, they actually had a project page. And then underneath that progress research and presentation, let's go with what they have there. Okay. So we need a project page. We need a progress and a presentation. We already have research. So we come down here and we just create those pages. So I need project page, which will be my overall page. 
And then I also need progress. And what was that last one? Presentation. Okay. So since I know I want those two pages to be sub pages, just like this shows up, if I hover over my project page, there's three little dots. I can change that to my home page. I can duplicate this page. I can see the properties, which is nothing more than just giving you the option to rename that page. Or I can add a sub page. So here we go. I'm going to click add sub page. And I'm going to go ahead, presentation, done. And now see how that nests underneath there? And I'm going to do one more, add another sub page. And I think it was progress. Okay. And that one shows up there. Okay. Now the research one, I recreated that page prior to realizing how I wanted these organized. That's not a problem. At any point in time, you can come in here and reorganize how all of your pages are displayed on your website. Okay, so if you're paying attention up along the top here, you'll notice I do have my project page and there are my two sub pages, just like they show up here. However, research is still sticking out here on its own. All I have to do is click and drag that page to where I want it to be. These little lines represent um, that page falling in between those pages on the same level. So if I come up here and I put it between home and project, it's still on that main level. And if you want to think of it, think of it like a hierarchy or a tree. And that's my main three options here, one, two, three. But I want it to fall down into the next level of sub pages. So what I do, instead of looking for that line, I look for the box around the page I want it to fall under and I drop it there. Now it falls to the bottom of those pages and if I wanted to rearrange it there, I could do the same thing. Okay. And that one I went a little too far. There we go. Okay. So that's how you add new pages, how you can create sub pages as well as organize the pages you already have created. And at any point, if I wanted to, I could pull one of those right back out, okay? Now, if I go back and I jump to themes and I say, I wanna go ahead and change this to a different theme, you'll notice it makes that change for everything, okay? These themes affect the entire website, all right? So we talked about themes briefly. We talked about <clears throat> creating and adding new pages. Let's talk about insert. This is where a majority of your work is going to be done because again, what's a, what's a website? It's nothing more than a place to house a bunch of information and this is how you're gonna get that information on your site, okay? So right off the bat, I'm gonna jump to our home page here. Right off the bat, I see we have a text box option, we've got an image option, we can embed something, we can grab something directly from Drive, okay? There's a lot of options here. So if we look at something like the homepage from this research project, there's a picture and there's a little summary about this um, student. So let's go ahead and start there. I click on text box, just one click and a text box is already added. I can add my information. I'm just going to grab this real fast rather than typing all of that out. And I'm just going to paste that in there real quickly. Okay. Now that my text is in there, I have some options just like I do in Google Docs or any other um, application. I can set this up as normal text, a heading. In this case, it's normal text. Okay. I can choose to bold, italicize, I can adjust my alignment, I can even do bullets if I wanted. If I had a link, I could link certain words, grouping of words, just like I would in any other Google application. And then if I wanted to get rid of this text um, in here, I could hit the delete button to get rid of all that text. Okay. Um, if you are pasting stuff, it's a good idea to always clear formatting when pasting text in from another site or a resource you're not familiar with, okay?
To the left hand side, there's a little palette, like an artist palette, and that will give you some options that go along with your theme to choose from. Okay, and there again, Google Sites takes a lot of the design element out of it, so there's not going to be that much to choose from. So you'll pick from what they have. Okay. Now that we have that in there, I want to add an image. So I click on images and it says, do you want to upload or select? If I hit select, well, I can add it by a URL. I can search. Or if I have a photo in my Google Drive, I can find a photo from there. So we'll get a picture of Kara when we were doing some stop motion stuff. She's going to be thrilled that I'm using her photo. And by default, it drops it underneath it. So it likes to compartmentalize things into different sections here. Okay. However, these sections can be moved and altered later on. And what you'll notice is um, the image has its own set of tools. I can crop it. I can resize it. I can also make um, an image a link as well. Since I want this up here with my text, I'm going to click and drag it. And you'll see some options just like with our pages, when we were organizing them, we get some blue lines here showing where do you want to drop this picture. And I want to drop it right there. And it'll resize it accordingly. And then if I want to make some changes later on, I can do so. And I want it to kind of be somewhat proportionate to um, my text here. So I make it a little larger. Perfect. And now it kind of fits the same size. Right. From Drive does exactly that. It gives you access to anything in your drive. So if I come down here and let's say I'm going to search for this presentation. And there it is. I'm going to select that and hit insert. And just like the photo did before, this one drops in underneath. I can expand it if I wanted to. Make it take up a little more space. If I don't want any panels on the side, I get that ratio just right. And then if I want, I can center it. You'll see there's little guidelines on both sides letting me know that there's an even amount of space on both sides. Okay. And then there's a little gear up here. That gear gives me some options because it recognizes that this is a Google slide presentation. I could set this up to auto start, to loop. Okay. I can set it up for a delay time, choose which side slide I want it to start on. Okay. This is great for like a banner if you wanted to create like a gallery of sli a slideshow of photos, or if you had in fact a presentation, this is a great way um, and some personalized settings to get these um, started the minute um, someone opens or gets to that page. I'm going to cancel here. And again, just like before, each one of these little compartment areas has that option. So if I wanted it to match up as a top, I'll choose that emphasis one so that my background for this whole page is this tan color. Okay. Now in addition to um, selecting inserting these options, there's also the option for layouts. So there's a couple layouts that you can choose from that they'll predetermine. You can see they have images and text, images along the side of text. So I'll use one of these layouts um, on one of the other pages here. Let's go to the research page. I'm going to select one of these options. And what they do is they do nothing more than place um, placeholders for you to fill. So I go, okay, well, what do I got to add here? Okay, an image. I can add a YouTube video. All the things I can put in here. Here they added a title. Okay. And here's normal text. Okay. So rather than having to come up again they want to take a lot of that design um, feature away because 
uh, not everyone is a graphic designer and make it a little easier for you they gave you these layout options okay so if I select another one it drops it down in a compartment right beneath that one okay so this is a great way if you know the information you're looking to house and you're not sure of how you want it to look or um, what kind of layout you want to use this is a great way to take advantage of the layout feature okay and then further down the line there's some options of specific things you might want to insert and what you'll notice is charts from spreadsheets Google Forms okay spreadsheets Google slides presentations docs all of these things right here you can insert straight from Drive the only difference is when you click on something like Docs it's going to show you only Google Doc files so it's just a narrowed search um, for files in your drive that's all otherwise coming down here to these options is no different than searching from drive and using that button okay they do however give you a few other options such as the option to add a YouTube video you can add a little divider so if you wanted a space between um, your two sections here you can do so okay so it just adds a little and again that color of that line is based off of your theme okay they also recently added the option for buttons so if I come down here and I do a button I say what's the name of my button or maybe I want a button so that you can get back home and then I have to put a link I could put in a link from another website uh, let's say I wanted to do a presentation let's say I wanted to make it a link to this I would call it tackling technology sites presentation okay and then put the link right here if I was linking it to another page on my site that's what these are right here so it's a way to make another button to another page but I want it to go to an external site I hit insert and it makes a nice little button here that can be moved around um, and that you can edit later on the link or the title of that button okay that button can be resized if you want it to be larger okay so those are the basics um, what I'd recommend with anybody that's starting to um, build a site or thinking about building a site is come up with a draft on a piece of paper of the different types of pages you want the different information that's going to be on there and how you want it organized when it's on a piece of paper like almost like a storyboard it's a lot easier later on when you come into the ac actual application because you know what you need you know the pages you need you know how they're going to be organized and you know what information is going to be on each page rather than kind of creating it getting stuck going back rearranging the pages rearranging the information that's on the pages come up with your idea and your template ahead of time this way when you get into the site you're not wasting time undoing redoing you know exactly what you want and where everything goes okay now before we finish here the last thing um, to do is to publish a site so as we're doing all this stuff Google is automatically saving just like it does with everything but nothing is viewable to the public yet okay so up here in the top right corner is a publish button that when you click it'll say what do you want to name your web address all of our web addresses created with a Hamilton email account or Google account will have this predetermined um, website prefix right here and then you get to kind of name that last personalize that last part and by default it'll take the name of your site and you can change that at any point um, here to one two three whatever the case may be and it'll Google will search to see if that name is taken and if it isn't you'll get a little check mark and if it's not if it is it'll say try another name okay also you can select who you want to view the site so by default anyone in Hamilton so that means for someone to view your site they have to have an Am Hamilton email if you click manage okay there's an option that says published that can be changed so that anyone that means anyone regardless of their email so parents community members can view this website okay and those are the two caveats when you're publishing a website is do you want it specifically to be viewed 
um, by students, staff members, or do you want it to be shared with community members, family members, et cetera? That, then you want to choose the correct option here. Okay. I'm not going to publish this guy. In addition to that, along the top here, obviously if you redo and undo, you can preview your site at any point in time. Okay, you can see what it would look like. You can interact with the buttons. Okay, you can see what it would look like on an iPhone or a mobile phone or even a tablet. Okay, and there's my presentation. I'll close out of this preview here. Another option within Google Sites, just as in every other site, is to share or add collaborators. So if it is a group project, you can invite other students, staff members to collaborate with you. And you can give them edit access or only access to view it once it's published. Okay, so just like our other site, uh, other files, you have view, comment, edit. Here, you're either giving them access to edit your site or you're only giving them access to view it once it's published. Okay, and again, if you're making that published site viewable by someone, by anyone, they're going to be able to see it anyway. So, this feature here of sharing and collaborating is really just for people that you want to work on this site with. Okay. Underneath the three dots are a couple other features as well as um, take a tour option which will go over a lot of the things I just went over. Um, help options where you can go to Google's site um, to get uh, view guides, cheat sheets, things like that which I've linked in the slideshow for you. Um, and a few other advanced features that if you're interested in, you can reach out to us at any point in time um, to come work with you during your prep, before, after school, whatever works um, for you. As I mentioned in that presentation, here's a couple other links to some sites that have a lot more information about what I kind of touched on here briefly. Uh, as always, if you have any other questions, do not hesitate to reach out to um, Kara, Chris, or myself. Our website is on here, uh, our emails, our Twitter handles as well. The presentation URL again is in the bottom right hand corner. Feel free to just pause the video and um, go there if you want. You can interact with all these links and have our uh, get in touch with us via, via our email. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, and I hope you're able to better understand what Google Sites is capable of in the classroom and able to utilize it with um, your students from here on out. Thank you and uh, have a great day.